If you take the, a, a, a broad picture of the, of the extent of health problems in the, in the community, it's often the case that people don't just have one problem. We have studies that show that people with a mental health problem seldom just have a mental health problem. They have something else in their lives. Um, we, we know that the more medical problems somebody has, uh, that increases the chances of a mental health problem because of the difficulties of coping. Um, other people have mental health problems which go much further back in their experience to adverse experiences in childhood, you know, bringing uh, emotional damage with them into adult life. That often expresses itself uh, as difficulties with uh, engaging with others, you know, not, never mind professionals but also uh, friends and families and, and community. Uh, and it, it often doesn't present uh, you know, with a badge saying I've got a mental health problem, it may present as something else, so you have to be sensitive to what might be behind the, the picture. The most important intervention is a relationship where uh, a patient uh, is seen by somebody uh, with whom they feel they have some rapport, uh, uh, some empathy, uh, a feeling that the person that they're seeing understands them as a person and their situation. If you don't have that relationship where you feel you're, you're being seeing somebody who cares, then it doesn't matter what that person says, it's much less likely to be effective. So the system is under, under, under pressure. It's, it's not well balanced. The relationship between community-based general care and specialist care, I think, is out of kilter. If healthcare is not delivered equitably, i.e. in proportion to need, then some groups will get the benefits of healthcare and others won't. So healthcare itself becomes a driver of widening inequality. Um, that's an issue in, in, in Glasgow. There are examples of general practice who are, make it their business to engage more with local communities because in a sense it, it strengthens what the practice can do. In 2009, we had a, the first national meeting of the Deep End project, which was general practices in Scotland, which were the 100 most deprived practices. And it was the first time they had ever been convened or consulted by anybody. Yet they are the front line of the health service in dealing with the most deprived and the, and the least healthy populations. And the challenge now is to um, convert these small projects into the mainstream in deprived areas and they include things like providing more time for consultations with patients, um, a better focus on continuity so that knowledge and confidence is built up, better relationships between practices, better sharing of experience. And, and the bottom line is that healthcare does make a difference if it's not done equitably, it'll widen inequality.